Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning. This is Bishop James Hansen Saki of the Christ Church International. What a privilege again it is to come your way with God's word of hope for your day today. It is a great blessing to be alive. It is not our right to be alive. We are alive by the grace of God and by the mercies of God. The Bible says it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. For his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Lamentation chapter 3, the verse number 22. This morning I want to encourage you from a very important um, perspective in scripture to deal with one of the most painful aspects of human relationships and that is betrayal. Betrayal. Because you see, betrayal is one of the saddest realities of human relationships. It can be manifest itself probably in a bold and direct way. For example, you know, treason against your country or the act of adultery against a spouse. Or it can be a quiet and subtle way by which, you know, a friend will stab you at the back. You know, flattering friends to get something from them or a little white lie to make you look better and someone else look worse is betrayal. Either way, betrayal involves the breaking of trust and confidence in a relationship. And on a more deeper level, even we as humans, we often betray God. Every day we break the trust of the one who created us and gives us life and purposes. We have broken trust and we have betrayed God. But you see, fortunately, as for God, by grace, through Jesus' death on the cross, we can trust God and be confident that he will never betray us when we enter into a relationship with him. Ladies and gentlemen, betrayal hurts. A lot of people are down. A lot of people are suffering so many things. A lot of people are not able to do anything in life because they have been betrayed before. And whenever you don't recover from betrayal, you are actually paralyzing your initiatives to become what God called you to become. The reason is because God has decided that any blessing he will bless us will come through other people. So he will always cause us to be related to some one other person or another. Relationships are the doorways of God's blessings. And love is sweet and beautiful. But when love hurts, it really hurts. Matthew 26, 45 the Bible says that Jesus went through a moment like that. The Bible says Jesus said, Look, the hour has come, or the time has come, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Jesus was betrayed by his best friend, his finance minister. You don't appoint a finance minister you don't trust. So what Judas did was a serious betrayal. But you see, when we are going through life, and we are going through betrayal, I'm sure everyone listening to me, one way or the other, you have been betrayed. If you have not yet, so long as you are in this world, this is not a prophecy of doom. You will experience it. And when you experience it, or you have experienced it, don't let it kill you. Don't let it retard you because it has potential of paralyzing you, destroying you, and destroying every initiative and grace upon your life. So the first thing to do when you are going through betrayal, or you go through betrayal, is number one, recognize that it is part of life. And it can happen to anyone, including you. When that recognition is there, you don't make it look, you don't come to the place where you think this has only happened to me. Something terrible is wrong with me. You need to make that recognition that it is part of life and it can happen to you. It is important to recognize that betrayal is an inevitable part of the human experience. Even Jesus was betrayed from the scripture we read. This doesn't make being betrayed easy, but it helps you realize that it doesn't mean something is wrong with you. You see, Psalm 55 verse 20, 22, David himself was betrayed. The man of God was betrayed. So being anointed doesn't immune you from betrayal. He said, as for my companion, sadly, betrayal doesn't come from strangers. It comes from people who have been close to us. Actually, some people we have actually helped. That is where it starts. When you have been in a relationship for a long time, then suddenly somebody breaks your heart. That is betrayal of the trust. When someone you have confided in turns around and betrays the confidence and tells other people, that hurts. David said, as for my companion, 
He betrayed his friends. He broke his promises. His words are smooth as butter, but in his heart it is war. The Bible says, give your beddings to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to sleep and fall. And that is very important. Make that recognition. Number two, in your pain, tend to the Lord. You see, being betrayed is like suddenly hitting a sheet of ice whilst driving. Our basis for trust suddenly disappears and we go into a dangerous skid. But when we tend to the Lord, it is like throwing sand on the road, restoring us to safety. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. Is, for me, this scripture is the, the scripture that lifts me out when I am betrayed. The nature of my work demands that I will be betrayed. <laughs> Every man of God will have their share of being betrayed. Hebrews 4.15 says, This high priest of ours understands our weakness. You see, there is comfort in the fact that because Jesus was betrayed, he personally understands your pain and it is he who has the power to help you because he has experienced hurt himself. Number three, be wise and protect yourself when you have been betrayed. It is a wise thing to do. Matthew 10, 16, the Bible says, Be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. Be wise like serpents, harmless like doves. When you realize you cannot trust a particular person, act wisely and take steps to keep yourself from getting hurt again. It is a wise thing to do. If you know someone is going to betray you, prepare yourself. Don't fall for that person's pattern. Think through how you respond to the gossip that will spread about you. But you can do this without retaliation, with kind words and a forgiving heart. You can avoid revenge and grant forgiveness while still exercising prudent self-protection. Because it's important to realize that forgiveness is mandatory but trust must be earned. When David realized that King Saul has broken his trust and has thrown threw javelins at him to kill him at close range. The Bible says, and David behaved himself wisely and King Saul became afraid of him. Number four, recognize who you are in the sight of God. When you are betrayed, sometimes betrayer make you feel like you are not called by God anymore. That your life is worthless, you don't matter, you are not beautiful anymore, you are not handsome anymore. Stop it there. When that happens, tell yourself, and recognize the gift of God on your life, the calling of God and who you are in the sight of God. Because your calling and your assignment and your mission will reorganize you back on track. Genesis chapter 50 verse 19 to 20, Joseph replies, don't be afraid of me. You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. Joseph recognized his position, so his brother's head of him didn't matter anymore. He was wise enough and he organized himself. When he knew who he was, he became great despite they selling him twice. Recognized because he was sold and then when he got to Egypt, the Israelites also sold him. But despite all this double betrayal, it didn't change the fact that God's hand was on him. Recognize God's hand in your life even when someone betrays you. God can pick up the pieces and make something good from your painful experience. Number five, keep trusting God and move on. 2 Timothy 2.13, if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. And when others are unfaithful to you, you can take great comfort in God's unwavering faithfulness. Anchor your faith and your ultimate trust in God and move on. And number six, finally, learn to forgive. Matthew 6, 12 to 14 tells us, forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us and don't yield to temptation. You see, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. Forgiveness is mandatory, but trust must be earned. Forgiveness is the only road to freedom from betrayal. Nothing that anyone has done against you compares with what you have done against God. But refusing to forgive another person means you just don't realize how much God has forgiven you. A forgiving person forgives. And when you do so, you move on. Forgiving doesn't necessarily mean you must trust again. Learn to know the difference. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you today that every pain that has been caused you through betrayal, I pray for you that God grant you grace to apply these steps. I pray the Lord heal your broken heart and restore your soul. I pray God restore your joy. I pray God honor you again. I pray God position new people in your life. I pray God lift you forward. I pray God cause you to become what he wants you to become and not what the betrayer wants you to become. In the name of Jesus, I pray the Lord lift you up today. Cheer up today. Organize yourself. Step out again. Trust again. Move forward again. It shall be well in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
and amen. And until I come your way again tomorrow, I'm Bishop James Hansen Saki of the Christ Church International. You are more than a conqueror. Have a blessed and fruitful and victorious day. Bye-bye.